and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. I recently found this Gaffrey Heavy Texture Acrylic Paint. And when I tell you I was excited about this, I think it was an understatement because I tried to be super prepared and actually unbox this and show you everything I got, but I was too excited to even check to see if my camera was focused. So I do want to share this one very blurry clip so that you could see kind of the fun part of this because this is a very unique paint, not only in what it can do, but also how it's packaged. This art material is an acrylic paint that has some sort of an additive in it that really thickens this up and it makes it really smooth, but you can actually make this like inches high and it's, it's unlike anything I've ever used, even with mediums. I spent quite a bit of time when I opened these up just squishing these because it's very satisfying and I, Yes, it looks a lot like frosting. Don't eat this. You won't want to eat it once you actually smell it. It doesn't smell terrible, but it does not smell like something you'd want to consume. After opening the package, there were some QR codes that actually had some reference videos so you could see a little bit of what to do and how the artist himself actually paints with this. So I watched a few of those videos and it looks like in a lot of cases, there's actually an undercoat or a painting kind of underneath that you emphasize with this stuff. And on their website, they technically do have their own other variety of viscosities for acrylic paints, and that's what they used. But I hadn't done enough research before I purchased the heavy viscosity ones, and I was just too excited. So I'm gonna have to use whatever acrylic paints I already have. And I have a pretty wide selection, so they might not be ideal, but I think they're gonna work. So I did start with that kind of as a basis, and I wish I had preserved some of this, but I did go a little bit overboard, and I definitely covered everything in this because I would just wanted to play with it. What I did in this video is really just the tip of the iceberg because in this video, I do two different paintings, but after I got this box, I got it on a Saturday, and I started playing with this around 6 p.m., and I don't think I finished until about 1 a.m., and then I even went back and painted the whole next day with it, too. I really wanted to get a good feel of this stuff, as well as it was just really, really fun to play with. This heavy body stuff is meant to actually be used with a palette knife or even just straight from the piping bag. And you'll see I did start with the palette knife and I tried mixing some colors. You can actually mix the different colors together. You can add in other acrylic paints to add kind of either a top layer or a little more dimension or just change the color of it. And I did play around with the palette knife, but the whole time all I wanted to do was squeeze these bags right on the canvas. I tried doing this in the sky and it, it didn't go super well. Um, I didn't really have a good plan for it or real purpose for doing it other than just wanting to squeeze and so I think I would maybe have had a bigger slit cut in this. I don't know. I mean, I just really wanted to squeeze it. That's the real thing. Now, I did actually do some of the squeezing with the piping bag in the foreground to give some kind of texture to some grass or plant type things and I think it worked a lot better there and in other applications it seems to work a lot better just squeezing it right from the tube. It, I just didn't quite have the hang of it yet. As you can see from this painting, I did start with that underpainting and then I just covered it all the way up and I kind of wish I had left it at around this point here. I think it was actually more interesting than what I ended up doing, but again, I couldn't stop playing with it. It's hard to walk away from this stuff. It's fun to play with. So here is the painting that I ultimately ended up making with this for my first try. I meant to do kind of a landscape and I wanted it to be really textured and I'm not crazy about this painting. I think it's an okay painting, but it doesn't really seem to capture what this material can really be used for. You could get some of these same textures with just palette knife and heavy body acrylics that are very run of the mill. And this stuff is extra special. So. I wanted to give it another go because this seemed very mediocre and like I didn't fully use the material to its full possibility and full advantage. One other note before I actually start working on this other one is it's surprising how fast this dries. It doesn't dry so fast that you can't work with it, but for how thick some of this is, you would think it would just take forever to dry. And yet after a half an hour, even some of those bigger peaks end up feeling almost dry to the touch. I really only had to dry these overnight to get kind of my final shots. They weren't fully, fully dry or fully set, 
but I could touch them and it wasn't going to harm them. All right, so for my second attempt at this, I had a bunch of leftover green from what I was doing in the foreground and I wanted to take advantage of that. Plus I had some peonies that had been down in my studio that were dying and I wanted to take a little inspiration from the flowers. So I started by making some leaves and I tried to be really loose with these. Again, I'm definitely overworking this with the palette knife. Palette knife painting is not my forte, but I was trying. I was trying it out and trying to give it a chance. Again, all I really wanted to do with this stuff was squeeze it straight out of the bag. That's the really fun part of this. So I couldn't resist just putting these flower bodies kind of on and then trying to go in and do some shaping. I tried to just kind of carve this out and I wish I had kind of, again, I ended up overworking a lot of this stuff because like right here, I think that these look kind of nice and I kind of wish I had stopped there, but instead I really kept going. I kept trying to add some of this in to get some more dimension and I don't, I don't really know what I was trying to do. I was also just trying to let myself play and just have fun. The parts of this painting that I ended up liking is I did do some piping straight into the center with the yellow to give kind of those interior stamens, and I think that's a really fun effect. While I was painting these and kind of overworking them and things, I did just keep thinking about squeezing these out, and it ultimately did help me experiment with a few things, because I was thinking maybe if you used... Um, paper you could actually squeeze a whole bunch of that material onto it to kind of set it on the canvas and then pull it up and um, make petals but but that didn't quite have the effect I wanted to and it did ultimately lead me down a different path that I'm gonna have to cover in a different video on a really fun application of using this stuff with some other stuff that I happen to have that made really cool flowers. A few more things about this Gaffrey art material. It It is a little bit pricey, but you get a pretty decent amount. I wasn't quite sure how to picture 16 ounces of this stuff, but I was able to make a bunch of different paintings with this, and I still have some left over. Each one of these bags ranges, depending on the color, from 11 to $17. They recommend that you work on a wood board or something that's a little bit sturdier so it can actually stand up to the weight. They say that if you use it lightly, you can put it on canvas, but I do think it could make the canvas sag a little bit because this stuff is a little bit heavy. And so working on wood panels is probably your go-to or best way to do this. The color range is a little bit limited in this super heavy texture stuff. So do expect to have to mix up some of your own stuff, but you don't seem to lose a lot of that texture when you do mix other acrylic paint into it, so that's great. And this is going to dry faster than you think. Also, it does have a little bit of a scent to it, so definitely work with a space that you can open a window or something like that. Unless you have a ton of practice already using the palette knife and you're very proficient with that, you're probably going to struggle a little bit with this. They do have kits that have actual lessons that come with them. So you might want to consider getting one of those kits to kind of get an intro start into how to do it. Unless you're like me and you just want to play, then go for it because it is fun. If you're looking to support a smaller art business, I think this is a great one. This isn't a super small art business, but it's not a huge manufacturer. They do make their own paints and they have a really interesting TikTok where they show you show them slapping this paint around and it makes it look absolutely fascinating. This is a super fun thing to play with. If this is in your price range, it is a little bit pricey to just go ahead and play, but you do get quite a bit in each of these bags. Would I recommend this stuff? Absolutely. I had so much fun playing with this and I can't wait to show you what I did after this in another video. Let me know if you've tried this before or if you really want to try it. If you wanna see more testing videos where I test out different variables for fluid painting, want to see any watercolor tutorials or some other art supply testing, subscribe to my channel. Or if you just wanna see some of the art that I create, it's really varied. You can follow me either at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts on Instagram or Rebel Unicorn Crafts on TikTok where I make some, some funny videos as well as some tool talk videos and 
I hope that you have a magically creative day.